Welcome to this episode of the Transformation Debrief. I'm Chris Hood, a digital strategist at Google Cloud and your host. In each episode, we aim to stir visionary thinking, share unexpected insights on transformation initiatives, and lessons learned along the way. Major League Baseball started back in 1876, and over the course of the last 146 years, has seen a multitude of equipment and technology advancements, from the weight and size of a baseball to artificial intelligence and the storage of over a century of stats and video clips, Major League Baseball has seen a multitude of forms of transformation, all to generate new experiences for baseball fans. Today, my co-host for this episode, Anil Jain, Global Managing Director for Media and Entertainment Industry Solutions at Google Cloud, joins me along with our guest, Truman Boys. Senior Vice President of Infrastructure at Major League Baseball. Let's get to know our guest a little better. Anil, would you mind sharing a little bit about your role here at Google? My name is Anil Jain. Uh, good to be here. I lead the Media and Entertainment Industry Solutions team at Google Cloud. Uh, what that means is uh, my team and I bring together uh, the entire Google ecosystem uh, to define the strategy and how we engage and deliver new products and new solutions to support the transformation initiatives of all our media customers around the world. Hi, I'm Truman Boyce. Uh, I'm the SVP of Technology Infrastructure at Major League Baseball. I'm responsible for transforming how we use technology at venues, our business, and supporting the 30 clubs and our operations. Uh, my focus is around cloud, networking, security, uh, the venue technologies like tracking of baseball, uh, and replay operations. So one of the things we like to do is start all of our shows off with the same question. And here it is. Anil, you can start. What was the most transformative role or decision in your career to date and why? That's a great question. And I spent you know, the first half of my career in a variety of different roles from engineering to product to marketing, strategy, sales and business development at a number of different software uh, startups eventually um, getting the opportunity to run my own business and then sell a company to a, a, a you know, larger SaaS provider. And for the last 12 years or so, my focus has really been on uh, bringing innovative technology to uh, media customers in the broader media and entertainment landscape. I was given an opportunity to move uh, overseas. Uh, initially, it looked like a one-year trip to go to New Zealand, start working with the telecoms down there. It turned into 10 years of traveling all around Asia Pacific. You know, I think being out of my comfort zone really pushed me to, to try new things and to, um, to learn very quickly. Um, and I've, I've seen this applied, applied in different aspects of my life, even post that transformation in uh, shifting a previous role I was in market data uh, delivery and then shifted into media and entertainment and knew very little about media and entertainment and had to quickly learn. One of the things that came to mind is, you know, the reason that um, years ago I moved into software is uh, because I really found that the speed of innovation is so much faster in software than almost any other industry, uh, just because you can take ideas and opportunities and actually build very quickly applications and solutions. And with cloud, that has only been accelerated, right? Because now you have global public infrastructure, you know, everything is kind of API driven and, uh, you know, a developer um, and a, you know, a product owner can decide we need to solve this particular problem and they can very quickly architect that solution without having to build all of the component layers of that stack. And I think, you know, that notion of time to value and speed of innovation is actually really, really inherent in cloud. You know, what's interesting also, and I'll add on top of that, is you're talking about the development and speed to innovation within an organization. But what we're also seeing is that the fan base has access directly to the same tools and data to be able to create their own experiences to consume the content in the way they want to consume it. And Major League Baseball is directly targeting that in some ways, right? We are. Um Engaging with, uh, you know, a broader uh, view of 
of baseball fans that are not just the typical, you know, go to a game or watch a three hour, you know, game in your living room. They're looking for highlights. They're looking for custom reels and content that is personalized to them. And we make it available. And it's, it's not just what we produce inside of, you know, our uh, editing facilities, but we just open it up. What do you want to see? And then, you know, have this, um, you know, sort of curated uh, from each individual end up, you know, they can build this content and then they can share it. Um, and so I think that's, that's an area where we'd really love to see this continue to grow. We have over 3 million assets on Film Room, which is hosted on GCP right now. And those, those clips are, you know, they're, they're, automatically generated and then they're uploaded and available for anyone to, to view. Film Room is a great example of enabling uh, consumer audiences to kind of self-serve and personalize the experience to, you know, in an interactive way. And, you know, at the, at the heart of doing that, I mean, I think it's something Truman you spoke to earlier, which is data. What are the, the chief concerns and challenges you're facing in this regard and how are you addressing them? Uh, in, in terms of data, I think the main challenge is that it's just never ending. Um, so if you kind of start there, the content is always happening. You know, there's 162 games a year, um, plus all of the other ancillary content which is produced. And um, you want to have this this data and this content that's relevant, it's contextually relevant to the fans. On the first point of just data being never ending, um, you know, we're looking in our media archives of nearly 60 petabytes of content. And these are historical archives that go back into the 1940s, 1950s. Um, beautiful games that largely are left in, you know, dusty archive rooms. And we have the opportunity uh, to take this and to make it available to fans um, in new ways. Not just, you know, old 16 millimeter film, film, which has been digitized and now available to, you know, look at for a video on demand, but but actually highlight reels that are generated with contain metadata so you can search across it and have this content um, you know, newly presented to the fans of today. You know, you talked about personalization and we're talking right now about film clips, but really this is going beyond just the game and the film clips themselves. We're seeing that personalization from the moment they buy a ticket and get to the stadium and sit in a seat and order food and what they're doing during the game and what they do after the game. Like all of this is part of your data strategy, correct? It is, it's just trying to transform what it is to experience the game uh, physically and even you know virtually uh, from one of our streaming services. So um, as you learn more about the fan, you're able to curate what the, the, the target um, the target either advertising or the way to engage with them. And I think we care more about the engagement uh, than, than pushing emails. We learn more about what their viewing habits are, what they care about. The fans themselves have transformed over, say, the last 100 years. What have you seen in terms of the, just their expectations and how those have shifted over the last couple of years? I'll call out two things that have shifted pretty recently. Um, the experience at the park has changed. Uh, you know, parks are being built in a different way. So it used to be, there's a bunch of seats, you get into your bleacher seats and you watch the game. Uh, now there's more things to do at the parks. It's more of like a, it's an experience. You go, you watch a game, hopefully you catch most of the innings. Um, but you're also going around, you're having a dining experience, you're eating, you're meeting up with friends. And then I think the second part is really around what it is like to have a digital experience at a venue which is this sort of hybrid world. I want to see content. I want to take a look at the last play. I have my phone, uh, but I'm also in the venue. And so how do you make that like a low latency experience so that you're not looking at two to three minutes after a play and it's just no longer contextually relevant? Truman, another quote that you had on Twitter just yesterday actually was, we are only seeing the beginning of cloud computing. I would tend to agree with you on this. But I'm curious from your perspective, especially in the text of transformation, how is cloud at the beginning and how is it helping us transform as we look towards the future? I think it's a great question. I, I'm looking at it historically. I have seen trends in technology where initially it looks like they're developed and that they're maturing, but there's so much more that's about to be unlocked. And when I see where cloud is today, 
Uh, there's still so many choices. And so I think we're going to see some consolidation across technologies. We're also going to see maturing of technologies. Um, and we're going to see that the capabilities are going to 10x from where they are today. First of all, I completely agree um, that there is so much yet to come. Um, and I think that's what keeps us all engaged and excited about the work that we do. Where I see it um, the most is, you know, when, when we talk about transformation in media, we really often talk about the transformation of audience experiences, which gets back to that personalization that's you know, been mentioned a few times. And I think if you look at a journey of a media company uh, in terms of its digital and cloud maturity, the kind of ultimate point at which you arrive is when you're truly a data-driven organization where what content you create, how you engage your audiences, how you personalize their experiences, how you turn that into you know, uh, high engagement, retention, and monetization. Everything is data-driven, and there'll be a lot more automation and learning uh, that happens uh, um, based on, on cloud. We've talked a lot about data, and if we say that data is our number one priority, what's Major League Baseball's number two technology priority? Growing the game. Uh, this is, over the last 100 years, this sport has been in the top three sports um, for the country. And we are looking to see baseball grow internationally. We're looking to see the presence of baseball um, throughout our country have a larger, um, uh, larger growth rate uh, and engagement. And being able to engage with, um, you know, with the youth is really important um, as we continue to see this sport evolve and connecting technology to the game to enable us to, to get that engagement to happen. This has been an awesome conversation. Thank you, Anil, for joining. Yeah, Chris, uh, thank you for hosting. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, digital transformation is at the heart of what we're doing at Cloud. And of course, specifically uh, in kind of our strategic industries like media and entertainment, uh, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of momentum. Truman, thank you for being a great, great partner of ours. Uh, it's been fun talking with you today. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you also, Truman. Appreciate all of your insights. It's been a wonderful conversation. If you would like to learn more about Major League Baseball, we have two channels for you to explore. At cloud.google.com slash transform, we dive deeper into this transformation journey, and you can tune into that digital show to hear the extended podcast version of this conversation. And don't forget to hit subscribe and join us again for more visionary thinking and lessons learned on the next episode of The Transformation Debrief.